Hey, Sean, can you hear us? What's, what's up, guys? What's, what's up, up man? Did, man? I, did I screw up their names or no? I like the women's fights. No, the, by the way, don't worry about it. They won't kick your ass. They really, they're really nice, man. So you don't <laughs> got to worry about that. Sean, man, I ain't seen you since Mar- since Old State put it to Maryland, man. How you been, see, man? baby? Oh, I, 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 what's going on? <laughs> That, that was intentionally. Uh, that was on purpose. <laughs> You've been holding that one. We've, I forgot about that. <laughs> Him and DeQuell, been, DeQuell ain't answered my text messages since. I've been trying to. I've been. I didn't put out a PVV for him. I don't know where he at. Look, we we got we got ghosts way before Halloween. Trust me. Man, that, that was, was bad. But you, but you know what though? Those three quarters, we had y'all on the heels, right? The, it, it, was, it happened exactly like I told you it was gonna happen. Yeah, I know, but but I, I I felt a little bit differently towards it that that middle of that third quarter. Yeah, y'all and I said, okay. You know what was yeah. bad? You know what was bad about Maryland is that after that game, y'all kind of went. Yeah, you know, it's one of those things, man. Where I think I think it took a lot out of them, um, because that was, in my opinion, they had a chance, right? I mean, you, I don't, we're not talking about moral victory here or anything like that, but I think they had a real chance. And sometimes when you have a, a a great team like that on their heels, you got a real chance. Like it takes, a, it's like a gut punch. It's a gut punch where it takes a lot out of you. And then you're right, man. Those following a few weeks after that, they were just like, what the same, you know, what the same team. You know what? What I heard, and you can tell me if this is true or not, Sean. I heard the reason Maryland kind of fell apart after that is because Connor Stallions was on the <laughs> sideline and he ran into one of Maryland's best players, knocked him out of the game, and. And that screwed up the whole season. Well, whatever you want to believe is true. I mean, <laughs> I, I was really that was making fun of Michigan more than Maryland. Uh, well, well we, I, that, go ahead. The cheating Michigan. No, I said, at, at, at that point, man, it was like, uh, like I said, it, it knocked a lot of wind out of them. Yeah. But you know, the, the truth, the truth of the matter, right? I, I just think that if Maryland goes out, you beat Illinois, you beat some of the teams that you're supposed to beat. If you lose, if you have a loss against Ohio State or Michigan, nobody's going to ra- you know, wave the white flag. And, and so the, their biggest problem, their biggest issue this year is dropping those games of teams they should have beat. Yeah. Right, well, let me ask you about this, this Sean. You know, the, the, the transport portal is crazy. Like, you know, I'm an OU Bobcat. We got a, a, a five-star guy. We feel like he turned into a five-star, 6'5", 231. And, like, he played well in the MAC. And he got in the portal. And so now he's going to go to another school, a bigger school. What ways can, like, teams that are that are trying to take that next step, like Maryland, is it a way that they can utilize the portal to get there? Or do you think this is going to be a hindrance to teams like Maryland? Because even if you do get some guys that you recruited and they're good, they may be looking to go to, like, greener pastures. So how do you, you view the, the, the transfer portal? It's a crazy time, man, because um, it's a little bit of a wild, wild west, right? Like you, you can have a, you can have a kid to come in one day and have a problem with a coach, and next thing you know, next week he's like, "Hey, man, I want to be out of here," right? And it's like no, it, there's no cause of actions, there's no process. You can literally walk in one day and say, "Man, I don't want to be here anymore," and go in the portal, right? And so that that to me is is uh, kind of it. Eventually, it's going to be a black eye to I think the college football that they don't have some kind of recourse of action. Right. I get it. Guys have want to have an opportunity somewhere else. Maybe you're not playing. I went through there where I didn't play my first year, year and a half at the University of Maryland. And I was like, man, I, I, you know, I went to the coach today. I'm looking at transferring because I'm not on the field and I got on the field, and did my thing. But I couldn't imagine being so easy because I just didn't like the situation I was in. Or I didn't like the position. Or I didn't like the way the coach was acting one day. Or I didn't like these winter workouts. Right. You just say, I don't, I don't want to be here. I'm gonna go somewhere else, right? And so I think it's it, when it comes to that, it, it, there's a little bit of the the wild wild west factor. But I think we're in this situation, guys, because the the college, the big time programs, and the big time coaches were greedy, <coughs> and they didn't want to share any of the money. And the players got screwed, as you did, as Tyvis did, as G. Bush did. You guys got screwed for years because you couldn't make any money off your name. You got a free bagel and cream cheese. You could be kicked out of the game. It was crazy. crazy. And because they were so greedy on the on the the coach and the school side, they never took any steps to say, "Hey, this is crazy. We got to change the system a little bit." And so eventually, it got to the point where, well, of course, it's Wild West because they were never taking steps that way. So it's all the fault of those schools and the greediness of the schools and coaches. I think. 
I, I would I would agree to that, but also go even bigger than that. I think it's NCAA's fault. Yeah, hundred um, percent for for not you know. By the way, if you're if you're starting to pay guys, let's call it five grand a month, right? Somehow off of the jersey sales, NCAA sales, school sale, wh- whatever it is. If you start to pay guys five grand a month five years ago or four years ago, mm-hmm. this wouldn't even be an issue. NILs wouldn't even be a deal because you, they've already made steps to make That's sure right. the players yep. and, and the student athletes were compensated. That's all guys want to do is compensate it, but they were being greedy for so long. They were holding back, not giving guys anything off of their names and off of who of what they've done yep. that it kind of blew up where they don't even have any control at this point on who's getting paid, what NIL deals coming through, transfer portals, who's – like they have no control. It's a, literally it's a wild, wild west now, and that happened because – they decided to do nothing for yep. decades. Yep. For uh, you know, however long the NCAA has been around, they, they they decided to do nothing to give the players nothing. But I guarantee you, three, four, five years ago, if they offered the top five, the top guys, or everybody on the team gets twenty five hundred dollars a month, your top guys get five or ten thousand dollars a month, there'd be no such thing as as the NIL. The NIL wouldn't be an issue. Uh, they wouldn't have to worry about guys getting a million, two million, three million dollars and leaving one school and going to the next because there's a bigger NIL deal. They kind of, in a way, brought this on themselves. No doubt. No doubt. By the way, you know who could use the transfer portal is the Browns because they have so many injuries. Mm. You know, can we can we transfer maybe Dearness Johnson back from the Jaguars? I don't know. But, Sean, this, I don't know how closely you followed this, but the Browns have the second most players on IR in the league, the most money in IR in the league, so many key guys they lead the league in turnovers they have a negative turnover differential and yeah they're on their fourth quarterback joe flacco and they're nine and five i mean it what what's your thoughts on the job the coaching staff and the players who are playing have done on this team the, the head coach isn't getting enough uh is it stavansky yeah. stavansky yeah yep. yeah stavansky yeah he's not getting enough credit for that um We've seen this one other time in the last like decade or so. I believe that when uh, John Harbaugh had, remember the Ravens team when Marcus Peters went. I mean, they had nine of their top guys to go down in one season, and they were still going out there competing. And so when you're able to find look the ro- the rotating door, that offensive line that they've had this year alone, outside of the quarterback position and some other big key get, uh, big key positions, look at that offensive line and, and guys had to step up and move over and switch positions, play. I mean, it's been crazy. And so there's no way they should be sitting around with that record if the coach, that coaching staff didn't figure out a way for them to go out and win football games. Because theoretically, you're not supposed to even be in contention when you have this amount of players. You're on your third or fourth quarterback, as you said, whatever it was. There's, there's no way in hell they should even be in this position. So we, the coaching staff is just not getting enough credit for finding ways to win football games. In terms of the injury, Sean, you know, obviously yourself and a lot of other people um, right now, you look at the rash of injuries that's been happening all over the league. And so, and I think it's really hitting home now uh, because I laugh and joke. They say, you know, when everybody else is getting injured, offensive line, D line backers, they're like, oh, it's part of the game. Let them let them quarterbacks get hurt. The the big money dudes get hurt. Then it's oh, we got to look at this. This is this is an epidemic. We can't have these backups in. What you know when you going through it as as a player, you know, a lot of guys on it. What are what are some of the things that you know you you the guys do behind the doors, just be just to get ready or to make yourself available, even though you're playing hurt. Well, you know, first and foremost, man, um, they got this thing. You could be in a walking boot all, all entire week, and they get they got get you out there in front of the fans in the crowd Sunday, and you get to jog it around. That adrenaline kick in. Next thing you know, that walking boot pop off. Remember back in the day, they got the in church. They touch your head, and they they get out the walker. They start walking. <laughs> Catch the ghost. That's that's what, that's what they do, man. In NFL, I'm telling you, you could be in a walking boot, can't walk around the entire week. Training staff gets you out there, and they. <laughs> They know they get you in front of that crowd. You hit the music, your teammates, and you know the energy's going. That adrenaline kick in, buddy. And you're going on the field, and so um, I think that in, in this particular case, whenever you have a lot of injuries uh, on a team, there's a mindset that takes place of what side of the ball needs to step up, and that's to me, in my opinion, that's why they're sitting around a nine to five still because they made it. They made a conscious effort, a decision that whoever goes down, somebody else 
have to step up. And that's the only way that you can be in a position like they are right now. You know, Sean, when you look at the defensive side of the ball, JOK has been playing unbelievable this season. I mean, he has, what do you got, 18 TFLs and three and a half sacks from a guy that was nothing last year. I won't say he was nothing. He wasn't that great last year. This year, he's unbelievable. You know, what do you think contributed to that? Is it the coach? Is it the scheme? What is it? I think it's a, a lot of different things. Um, and, you know, I played with a, a really a damn good player, Sean Phillips, being on the opposite side of me. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I did every every week. I knew the teams were looking to double team me, triple team me, fan protect, slide protect, chop block, crack back. I mean, every week I knew I was going to see a different formation that was going to stop me from getting to the quarterback. What happens is you got somebody else on the opposite side of you is going to get that one-on-one. -on -one. And when you got a guy that's capable of getting that one-on-one, -on -one, like I had Sean Phillips, uh, he's he's playing right now because Miles Garrett, they got other guys that's re uh, requiring so much attention on that defense, and he's out. He's going out winning those one-on-one -on -one battles, and you need guys like that because that takes the attention off of a Miles Garrett. That takes the attention off your big-time players because they're not worrying about getting double-teamed. When, when you got other guys going out there making plays too, as he did this year, playing in that backfield, that's that's a win for everybody. But that's ultimately what you what you hope for out of your defense. Hey, you talk about getting seeing double teams and triple teams. A guy like Miles Garrett, what? How do you defeat those? What's the best way you think to defeat a double team or a triple team? It's a mentality at that point, man. Because at the end of the day, it's you know that going into a game, Miles Garrett is going to require all your attention. You got to find out where he's lining up at. Strong weak side. You slide protection. Roll that. Roll that offense line over. Chip block. Keep that tight end in the set. Make sure they hit him on the way out. The problem is when well, they got very good this year, and that's being able to rush him down the center of the guard. At that point, you can't do anything. When somebody's capable of doing that, they can rush you off the edge, move around that, that C and D gap, and, and kind of bounce around that way. When they start lining up over your center and guard, and they can pass rush your center guard down the middle, there's, there's nothing you can do with that, right? But that's just straight up, I, I'm, I'm better than you, I'm a man. And you can't block me. And that's what's been happening with him this year. And, and I always said this, and this is my biggest gripe with Miles Garrett. I remember a long time ago when I seen him in person, dude, and I seen him, I said, this dude doesn't look real in person. I mean, he looks like a cocktail character, a superhero. And my biggest gripe with Miles Garrett in the past was he didn't play hard for 60 minutes. Uh, you know, some days, some plays he'll take off, some plays he'll, you know, he'll go missing for a series. The way he's playing right now, nobody can block him. No one could do anything with him because he's turned that he's turned that switch on for four quarters. We haven't seen this Miles Garrett before, and I know he, he got banged up a little bit this year. But outside of that, he's doing something we haven't seen him him do in, in probably in his career. Um, let me let me ask you this question, and we want to get to to your league, man. Uh, the lights out extreme fighting. Now you guys hit a milestone. You know, I'm in the content. I'm into figuring out what the algorithm. You guys look like y'all didn't hit the algorithm. 90% viewership increase from the last if, uh, from the last event with FUBU Sports. What are you guys doing to, you know, stand out in that market? Because that is a crowded sector. It's a very lucrative sector. What have you guys been doing behind the scenes to really put yourself on the map and to grow your business model? Well, one thing you said, man, is the truest thing of all is it's a it's a crowded space, right? Um, but you start to have a couple organizations like us to pop through the cracks and start to kind of separate what we're doing. I think for us, um, we're not in competition with anybody. And I was just with uh, Dana the other Dana White the other night, um, actually a couple couple nights this past week, um, in the World MMA Awards where I was presenting, and got a chance to talk to him, got a really good relationship. We. You know, the UFC is a big part of why I got into this business. Back when I started going to fights in the mid-2000s, 2005, 2006, I knew I wanted to be in the sport, uh, and so we are. And so with us, it's just more growing organically. People are finding out more about us, obviously having the opportunity to come on shows like this, talk about it. But more importantly, man, I, you know, I coming from the NFL, the background, which is the NFL will always be the biggest platform in this country, I mean, in sport, when it comes to sports. Um, and to have that affiliation and making that transition into what I'm doing now, it's it's been beneficial because, you know, now people have followed me in my career and playing football now, watching MMA and watching my building. And more and more people, man, are, are finding out about us. And I think that's that's where the upside is, man. It's like, OK, now we went from people hearing about us to people knowing about us. And now people are actually watching us. And that's why you're seeing the, the jump in viewership as, as we had these fight, fights over fight. By the way. Two fights ago, we were up 70% viewership uh, from, from the nice. fight before. That, to me, is 
when you're making those type of jumps, man, it, it says a lot of, about what the fans are, are liking from us. Sean, give us a little preview of the of the the, the high, you know, the lead fight there, the highlight fight, main event. If yeah, this one's this one's actually our um our our first main women's uh, bout that we've had for a main event. And uh, typically, I stay out of the matchmaking process, man. Um, you know, I got great matchmakers, I got a great team, and and I'll step in once in a blue moon if 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 something needs to get over the hump. This is one of the ones. Once I found out this one was available with with um, Abby and Jackie. You know, these two women, they're badass, man. And everybody in the MMA community know who they are. Um, and it's, if I had my pick, which I never know, but if I had my pick, I think it's going to be the fight of the night. Uh, this is our biggest card we've had in the history of the company, um, not just because of women's uh, main event, but some of the uh, up-and-coming superstars. I think we got about two or three people on this card that has a real shot uh, at the UFC uh, when they've done a couple of fights with us. So, yep, Saturday, January 6th, um, we'll be in L.A. I mean, I'm sorry, Long Beach. And uh, we'll be live on Football TV, Football Sports. If you don't have football, man, make sure you get it. This one's going to be a banger for sure. And when, when do they get, get football? Can you just download that wherever you get your apps or whatever the case may be? Yep, yep. You can download, you can download, subscribe to Football. Um, you know, they got a lot of great programming on there. We just moved into the top five or close to the top five most watched, you know, in the history of the company on Football. So, that that was a that was another big milestone for us. They got some great some great content on there, some other great sports leagues and, and whatnot. So to be up there with, with some of the best um, you know leagues and not just in the country but in the world. That's you know because they got huge they're huge in international soccer and some other sports. And so to be up there with, with with everybody else has been pretty cool. I got I got the biggest shocking thing when it comes to MMA. Do you know that as out of shape as I am now, there was a few years ago where I was in a little bit better shape, and I yeah, actually yeah. trained with an MMA fighter for six months. What's the she, And the MMA, it was a, a, a woman who was an MMA fighter. She actually fought for the women's championship. She lost in the UFC. Jessica Evil Eye, you know the name? Yep. She, 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 she hasn't been as good recently. She's, you know, but, but anyway, I trained with her for six months. Was it intense? She was just trying to make me less fat. It didn't work. <laughs> it, it, it worked. It worked. But then I gave it all. I gave it all back. Sean was like, nah, "I gave bro. it all back." It's the eating that gets you, Sean. You know, it's the eating that gets you. She did help me. I, 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 I had I had no idea where y'all was going through conversation, but I'm glad he said what he said because I didn't want to, you know, lead down the down the wrong path with that yeah. one. So I, I keep it real. <laughs> Sean, great. Hey, last thing, real quick on football. Did you sack Joe Flacco in your career? Uh, and could, could you have imagined he'd still be, he'd be playing as well as he is coming back here right now? I don't know if I got I don't know if I got Flacco maybe, um, but you know what? One, one thing I'm happy about Flacco it, because it's showing. Look, it's some guys that need another opportunity, mm -hmm. right? You, they sit on the street right now. That's like uh, you know that can play because what he's doing right now he's he's saving them. He's saving their season. You know, truthfully, he's saving their season because they – otherwise, when you look at all these other positions and the talent that they have on this team, they can play. But since we're in a quarterback-driven league, like you need somebody to go out there and is capable of making these plays with, with the, you know, at the quarterback position. He saved their season. And, and by the way, he was on the street, you know, some weeks ago. And, you know, sitting on his couch with his, you know, with his family and, and, and not even thinking about football. And you can tell, man, like when his interviews, his post-game stuff in the locker room, when he's around the guys – He's just appreciative, man, and and this, and I and I get this. I I have the the same sentiment when it comes to having another opportunity to do what he's doing, man. He he can actually, if they keep at this pace, I think they can be a contender. If if they get some guys healthy, I know they got some guys went down for the year in IR, but if they can keep up this pace, I really do think that they can they can uh, contend. So what you're saying, Sean, is that I should get back in shape and get back out there because I mean I'm very appreciative of the game, and I'm only 29, so. You know, we, we, was, we was talking about Joe Flacco, though. So we, you know. <laughs> oh! 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 My God! Off the top, bro. That was he, been a he, he's still upset about the Manly <laughs> game. <laughs> we was talking about Flacco. We didn't, didn't say silence. We were just, it was just Flacco. He was <laughs> waiting on that one. Man. <laughs> he saved it. Yeah, that was that's, that's gonna end it there. Thanks, Sean. Hey, yeah. January six. Yeah, that's all right. You go, you go get Fubo. yours, Sean. Don't worry about it. Oh. <laughs> I already got mine some weeks ago, man. That was a payback. <laughs> it's a payback. He did, yeah. Thanks, y'all. Wow, man. That was, that was funny. He caught